All right, now I'm standing next to the new Z119C, and I've been waiting a long time for Ranger to come out with their new, newly designed 119. The 119, a 19 and a half foot boat, uh, Ranger's 19 and a half foot boat, for, is the one that has not been redone for quite a few years. Um, basically, they were waiting it out, and now we have it as a C model, which gives us the full front deck, which is wonderful. Before, we used to have a storage box here, so we lost a little bit of front deck. Um, and it did not, last year, it did not have the center rod locker. So it's wonderful to have, this is basically a mini Z521 or Z520, it's just those Z119. Now the Z119 is a 19 and a half foot boat that is rated for a 225 Mercury motor, or any, actually any 225. And it also can take a 101 trolling motor, which is very nice to have. You can actually put a 101 like we have on this, a 101 four tracks. You can have a 225 Pro XS, we do strongly suggest the tandem trailer. We have sold some Z119s uh, with a single axle trailer. It seems like it's just right on the line. If the guy puts a lot of gear and has it full of gas, it seems to, to prematurely wear out the tires. So we have found that our best shot is to definitely go with a tandem, if at all possible. Okay, and this particular boat does have a tandem under it, and you can see it is a painted trailer like what we talked about earlier. It is a painted trailer, but it is road armored underneath it, okay, which is a great feature. Again, up on the front deck, we do have the center rod locker, just like the Z521, and we're actually going to move the camera so we can actually take a look at the front bow of the boat. Okay, we're up on the front deck of the Z119C, and this particular boat was the first one that I got in. I think we got one of the first ones out because we were actually out of boats, and so Ranger was getting us some, some new models really quick. And uh, actually, as soon as this boat came in, we had a customer uh, read about it online that we had gotten one, and he came right down and purchased this boat. So this boat actually is getting delivered in a couple days, so we're lucky enough to get to do our video before. So, and, and, and just for him, I had to make sure I took my shoes off because he is that particular that he wants no people with shoes on in his boat. So, this boat will look just like this 20 years from now. So, again, up on the front deck, the same layout as the Z521C and all the, all the C boats. Recessed trolling motor pedal, all glassed in. Offset bow panel, okay. We have an Elite 7 HDI in here, and that's why we have a transducer on the outside of the trolling motor is because it is a down imaging unit and you have to have a transducer on the outside if you want down imaging up on the front. A couple changes that they've done actually this year to the Z series, and we should talk about those now because we're actually up here. Um, the Z series are now coming standard with a foam front deck. So the front deck does have the foam. Ranger has actually recessed the front decks a little bit. There used to be a bulge right here where you saw the foam start. In, in the carpet you could actually see where the foam was and where the foam wasn't. Now they have actually recessed that deck so that the foam and everything stays perfectly level, which is very nice. Much cleaner looking, um, just looks perfect, which is, is uh, how it should be. Um, tool holders up front here, retractable rod buckles, pop-up cleats, and they've also done their navigation lights in the side. And I do not have them on, but this is your green and your red's on that side. Very nice. Okay, no more worrying about your navigation light pole breaking or anything as such. I know after a while those sockets in the bottom, they were plastic and they would break, whether from hitting waves or just all around wear. And now they're built in. They're perfect. We've got to use them all last year. We've had zero issues, which is wonderful. Up in the front deck, we do have a big storage compartment here. Okay. And the wonderful center rod locker, which is awesome. 19 and a half foot boat, big, perfectly finished center rod locker. Again, on the Rangers, all of their center rod lockers are set up to be either a rod locker or a storage box. So at any time, you can take your rods out, put a divider in, okay, and now you can set up as many planos in this boat as you want, okay. When the rods are in here, you can put eight planos in, two here, two here, two over there, and two there. Okay, and still have all your rod storage, okay, which has eight tubes in it. Again, all perfectly finished, all gel coated, all lighted. As you see, double beaded trim all the way around. Ports for where your water can drain off if you're out there in a torrential downpour fishing. Now you have a place for the water to go, so it's all going to drain down in the hull of your boat. Okay. 
carpet's awful new, so let's put a little weight on that thing. That compartment's latch. Big core up on your front deck, which is wonderful. You're sitting up here fishing, you want to water, grab and go. Tool holders up front, tool holders down in this area, and your bump board. These are all very accessible. So you don't have to open a compartment to get to your bump board. Okay, it's all right there, which is a great feature. Again, full front deck, very wide. Most important thing is how wide it is sitting next to the butt seat. You do not have to turn sideways to come up onto your front deck. You can walk straight across, come over, get right to your trolling motor. Fish finder is offset a little bit, so your trolling motor cable will never get in front of your fish finder. Huge feature. You don't sit there and kick the cord all day like you used to in the old days. Again, troll holders up here, cup holders, your trim and tilt buttons, your anchor lights, navigation lights, all right up front here, all right at your fingertips. So when you're up here, you don't have to go to the back unless you're throwing fish in that live well. So it's a, a perfectly organized front deck. Okay, we are at the cockpit area of this new Z119C. Um, we have our Elite 7 HDI also here at the dash. So we have down imaging and full GPS. Great units for the money. I can tell you the HDI units, the, the Elite 7s are, are just a great value. This particular uh, boat does have digital gauges also. So you have digital speedometer, digital trim, digital fuel gauge. Everything's digital. But this customer also requested to have a SmartCraft gauge. So we do still have the Mercury SmartCraft gauge. It is not a standard feature, but it is, uh, we did install it on this particular boat. So having the SmartCraft gauge, I do like the SmartCraft gauges. The SmartCraft gauge actually gives you some information that your regular gauges will not, um, like the amount of fuel used, gallons per hour, things like that. Um, we'll give you a little bit more information. If you do ever have a problem, the SmartCraft gauge can actually give us some clues to what's going on with your boat, okay? So this particular boat, we do have a hot foot. We do have trim and tilt on the wheel. We do not have a hydraulic jack plate. We do not go hydraulic on this particular boat. So that's why we do not have the other blinker off the side. Um, but one for your trim and tilt, one for, and you have your hot foot, hands-on steering at all times, which is a great safety feature. A lot of people ask me whether they should put a hot foot in a boat or not. Um, I really do try to emphasize that any boat that goes up over the 60 mile an hour mark should get a hot foot. I know that in our area we have some idle only lakes and it is a little bit of a pain having to keep your foot on the hot foot to, to idle a little bit faster, okay? But on the flip side, the safety feature of if by chance you are running across a lake and God forbid something happens, you hit a log that's not normally there, it's an area you normally know, um, and, and something happens and you get knocked out of the boat or get knocked around in the boat, that hot foot is very spring-loaded and that thing will come immediately back tidal, okay? So not everybody runs with their kill switches, even though they definitely should have life jacket on, kill switch in place, but if you do not and something happens, at least it's going to come back to idle. It's not going to be going 40 miles an hour running around in circles, okay? Which I have seen in a couple occasions that people have been ejected out of their boats and I've sat there and watched a boat run in circles for two hours until it ran out of gas. Very, very dangerous situation. Really no way to go get that boat. Okay? Um, and the problem is, is on that particular boat, that boat actually turned around and just about run over the driver. It came right back over him. If he didn't go underwater, he'd have gotten killed. So, very important to have. I, I like the hot foot as a safety feature. I think it's a great thing. Um, both hands on the wheel, so no chance of losing grip and spring-loaded. Just a great, great deal. Okay, we're on the back deck, and actually we have the number one compartment open on the rear deck of a boat is the live well, and you hope you get to use that a lot. And basically, the live well does have a divider in it, which is very easily removed. So if you are fishing buddy tournaments that you don't need a divider in, take your screwdriver, two screws out, the divider's out. It does also have split loops. So if you are fishing with, uh, as it, with a co-angler in the back, he doesn't open your lid to get inside your fish. Okay. Um, also in the center, now standard, is the glove box feature. And you can still get these with a bench seat. So if you decide you do not want the glove box, and for me and for Victor, I can 
tell you that we normally always get the bench seat just because we take the kids and we need the extra seating area. But a lot of people do like this new uh, glove box. It's great for wallets, cell phones, all that kind of stuff. It's a great little handy area there. Um, storage boxes on both sides. And they are perfectly finished. Um, that's one main thing about a Ranger is their boxes are perfectly glassed, perfectly finished, and they actually are strong. Okay, they are part of the structure of the boat. So, in other words, when this deck and this hull are apart, okay, um, before they put them together, they actually trial glue on the bottom of all their compartments, and, uh, and, and that's including on the front deck, rear deck, and in the floor area down here. So when that boat goes together, and actually the rub rail gets put on, they actually do throw shotgun shot, bags of shotgun shot in all their compartments and down in the floor area. And they let it sit for a couple hours until that glue dries, so they know they've got a perfect situation there glued together. So that makes, that's why Rangers do feel like they are an all one piece boat. All the other boats out there in the industry, um, they do not do that because they do not have the glass boxes. They do not glue their boats together that way. Okay. So in other words, in order to get a Ranger completely apart, if you ever had to split it, it would be a major act of Congress. It's extremely, extremely difficult to do because they're glued together. There's also a lot of foam involved where their, all their gunnels are foamed, their floors are foamed, even all around all the compartments are foamed. And I know that Ranger just came out with a new video, I just received them in the mail, on a plant tour video of the Ranger plant. So after looking at this video, it would be great to go online. I should be able to have one of those uploaded also, and we can get that thing online. You can actually take a virtual tour of the plant and see how these boats are put together and what makes a Ranger last and hold up better than any other boat on the market. Okay, we're here in the back compartment of the new Z119C, and I've got to tell you, it's just a, a great layout on this back compartment. As you can see, and I'm not sure how well that camera can get in there, we have four sealed batteries, 31 series batteries, all laid out perfect in the back compartment. We have remote oil fill, but your oil tank is down here. And then we actually have this smart little switch in the corner here. And this switch that's in the corner of this boat is very, very important in today's day and age for these new boats. Um, these motors require a lot of cranking amps to start. There's computers on them, they have to have power in order to start. And basically what has been going on is people are going out fishing all day on the trolling motor, not running their big motor much because the big motor will charge the starting battery when it's running. And then all of a sudden they go to take off and their battery's dead, it won't start the motor. So you have choices of having a set of jumper cables, you have choices of bringing another extra battery or a jumper pack, um, but Ranger has kind of resolved that issue for you now. They actually have a switch back here in the corner that says off and charge. So when you switch that switch to off and charge, there is nothing that works in the boat. Okay, No fish finders can turn on, no switches can turn on, the motor doesn't even trim. Okay, and the motor won't start. Now, you plug your charger in. This particular boat has a four bank charger. You plug your charger in. It charges all your batteries. Get up the next morning. You're ready to go. Get to the lake. You turn it on, on and run. Okay, and this boat operates just like any other boat out there. Middle of the day to end of the day, all of a sudden your, your motor won't start. You don't have enough juice. Okay, you've ran your fish finders all day. You've got structure scans. You've got live wells running all day. You got navigation lights in the morning, you have pulled that battery down. At that point in time, you flip it to jump start. And jump start will take and jump from the starting battery to one of your trolling motor batteries. So it basically uses both of those batteries to start your motor. Now, I have seen it happen a couple times, especially if you go to tournaments like up at Lake Erie and you stay in one spot all day and you run your live wells on on, not on auto all day, on on, full bore all day. And that's what you have to do to keep 20, 25 pounds of fish alive, is run them on full all day, okay? That starting battery will get drained so low that even with a set of jumper cables or even with the jump switch, it will not start your motor. So at that point in time, you flip it to battery two only. And at that time, it will start your motor off of one of your trolling motor batteries. At no time does that motor see anything more than 12 volts. Everything's hooked in parallel, okay? but it makes it super convenient for our customers to be able to sit there and never have to worry about having a set of jumper cables in their boat, which is a great, great feature because no matter what, when you're sitting there playing with 
voltage with batteries and wires and stuff in the back end of your boat, especially if there's waves, it's not real, real nice to be doing that out in the middle of the lake. And so that start, that, that switch, it used to be called a start now box. This is just the upgraded version and it works incredible on, on these boats. We close up that compartment and we're going to just swing back to the motor here where we do have a manual jack plate on this particular boat. We have our auto bilge pump and our manual bilge pump. We have hydraulic steering, okay, and just a very clean area back here. How nicely it's done that there's no cables hanging out, everything, everything's cinched up very nice in a sheath. Everything's perfectly done. Um, we have ratchet tie downs on the trailer. We have LED lights on the trailer. And that's one thing that we're going to back off a little bit and just take a look at this Ranger Trail trailer to finish off this video. Hey, we are here on the outside of this new Z119C, and uh, the thing we want to talk about now is the Ranger trailer, okay? And it might not seem like a huge deal right now when you're looking at a boat, but I can tell you that we've actually been selling boats here at Big Sports Center for about 21 years now, and we are seeing the boats that we sold in the early 90s and late 90s even coming in, and the trailers are completely shot, okay? And we actually have also taken in old Rangers, 1980 Rangers, 78 Rangers, that the trailers were actually still in incredible shape. And the main thing with a Ranger Trail trailer is that they do not use a tube trailer underneath their trailers, okay? Ranger does build their own trailers at the plant, right there, they have their own trailer plants, which is uh, unique. Ranger's, I believe, the only company that does that. Um, but they are all C-channel, okay? And so no water holds in the frame of that trailer. They also have gone a step further now they actually have road armor on their trailers, which is a spray-on bed liner that is extremely durable, okay? Uh, stopping any rock chips or anything like that on your trailer. Um, and then also on painted trailers, on the trailers that the customer orders in, like this particular trailer is a burgundy trailer, um, they actually spray paint on top of the road armor. You can actually see the surface isn't perfectly flat, but you have a complete road armor trailer with paint on top of it, which is a super feature for these boats, okay? Um, match that up with fiberglass fenders so you don't have any rusting on your fenders. Uh, even if you went with high-end trailers in the older days um, that had stainless fenders, the step pads were still steel and we always had rusted up step pads, especially if they put carpet on, those would rust out extra quick. So very nice to have an all fiberglass fender. They have really listened to the fishermen and have a couple steps now in the middle of the fender, which is very nice. Um, so that you can get in and out of your boat very easy. And even for us, when we were at tournaments checking live balls, it was not very easy to get up and range in an older Ranger trailer because this was all perfectly smooth and flat with fiberglass. Now we have steps built into them, which is wonderful. They do come standard with tandem axle surge disc brakes, and they have a new oil bath system on their hubs that now have, uh, they're saying, no maintenance for 100,000 miles on them. Okay, so it is a grease oil to say that when it's actually sitting, it looks like grease, but as soon as it warms up, it turns to a real heavy oil, and it's been an incredible system. I can tell you, we've had those for about the last three years. It really, really has been fail proof. We do suggest on our Z119s to go with a tandem trailer, like I said, and that's why we have a tandem trailer underneath this. With the 225 motor, it does get, if you fill this thing with gear, it really does, I believe, just about overload that single axle trailer. Even though they use a heavier axle when they go single axle, I still think on this particular boat, you're definitely better off having the tandem axle trailer. So, it's, uh, it is a new model out. It does have the, um, the Ranger trailer under it with swing away tongue. Um, the new front deck, everything about it has made this new Z119. It's going to be a really hot seller for us this year. 225 rating. Definitely, if you get a chance, stop by the showroom and take a look at them or give us a call and we can help you out in any way possible.